In this world full of uncertainty, constant change may occur extraordinarily or silently. These small changes are the sole reason why mountains like this were slowly worn away until they became like this. The earth that served as a habitat for all living and unliving organisms is a deaf witness to how these changes happened over time. With these events, we humans must ask ourselves, does your action help the environment to heal, or it just speeds up the destruction of the world? Together, let's unravel the underlying effects of two biogeochemical cycles on our dearest land and know what the future holds for our phosphate. As we all know, multiple biogeochemical cycles sustain the Earth, two of which are sedimentary and phosphorus cycle. Both cycles are concerned with the process of transferring nutrients to other Earth's components. In contrast to other cycles that take place in atmosphere, the sedimentary cycle exclusively happens in the Earth's crust. One of the most common sediments that carry through the Earth's crust is phosphorus, which is why the phosphorus and sedimentary cycle have an intact relationship with the environment, especially on land. The phosphorus cycle usually happens through water, sediment, and soil. Through this process, all the living organisms on Earth can get the nutrients they need as their presence in the soil affects the autotrophs. The plants serve as autotrophs, and since we take them, we can also be affected by the process called phosphorus cycle. Phosphate ions and other minerals are released from rocks over time by weathering and precipitation. Then the inorganic phosphate is dispersed in the soil and water. Plants take up inorganic phosphate from the soil. Animals might then eat the plants. Once the phosphate reaches the plants or animals, it is incorporated into organic molecules like DNA. The decomposition of an animal or plant's corpse replenishes the soil with organic phosphate. Phosphorus from soil can end up in rivers, lakes, and the ocean. Once there, it might progressively mix in with the sediments. The phosphate that the organism acquires is returned to the soil or water through animal excretion and decomposition of dead animals. The Shuttleist principle says that when a disturbance is put on a system that is at rest, it may push the system away from its state of equilibrium, but it will also cause a countervailing influence that will cancel out the effects of the disturbance. The Shuttleist principle and chemical equilibrium can also be seen in everyday activities. In a larger scale, we can still observe it in our ecosystem through different biogeochemical cycles. In land, we can observe it by understanding the concept of phosphorus cycle, by erosion and by weathering rocks. It's phosphate ions that are distributed in soil and water. According to the National Geographic Organization, human activities are the biggest threat to the environment. Humans have significantly affected the cycle because of the demand for phosphorus needed to create fertilizers that support the nutrients that plant needs in order to grow. The use of too much fertilization causes the plants to grow rapidly, even though it's true it's not enough to supply the nutrients. Not only that, but mining also triggered many problems that are currently existing. It causes chemical leakage that affects the health of living organisms in nearby areas such as plants, animals, and even humans. We all know that humans have greatly influenced the phosphorus cycle by releasing mined phosphates into the ecosystem through fertilizers, detergents, and sewage waste. In the United States alone, it is reported that 95% of phosphate crops were mined and it was used to manufacture ammonium phosphate, fertilizers, and animal feed supplements. This activity can pollute the air, contaminate the water, and destroy the wildlife habitats. Each country has different species of abiotic and biotic life because other regions have different types of environments. This is where invasive species comes in. They are organisms that are not native to a particular area. Invasive species can cause harm economically and environmentally to places they are not a part of. The sedimentary cycle refers to the process through which material is transferred and deposited in various places. Sediment can also enhance soil fertility since plants and animals use its nutrients for growth. The phosphorus and sedimentary cycles have a positive and negative impact on the land. When used properly, they may be beneficial, but when misused or used excessively, they can be destructive. 
Zebra mussels are one example of an invasive species endemic to the Black and Caspian Seas that has spread to numerous inland North American waterways. In these aquatic environments, zebra mussels considerably impact the phosphorus and sedimentary cycles. They may consume a large amount of nitrogen, increasing the phosphorus level. As a result, other aquatic species have more access to phosphorus. This may result in a nutrient imbalance affecting the ecosystem's health. Moreover, they filter large amount of sediments from the water, which can increase sedimentation in some areas. This can lead to change in the riverbed structure, which can impact living organisms. part of epigenetic modifications that may not support continued survival. We must be conscious of our surroundings and activities that influence the environment and its inhabitants as we face a variety of challenges and elements that may damage the land and its life. Knowing how environmental factors affect epigenetic traits helps people make healthier choices. Environmental awareness can also promote epigenetic protective policies and behaviors. 